When your task is trapping a rabbit, you gotta be on the hop. Sometimes that's easier said than done. So we, we are located in uh, eastern Idaho in the Lemhi Valley. It's a high desert valley that runs along the border with Montana. And it's a sagebrush steppe environment, which means it's a mix of shrub and grasslands. And it is just a, a gorgeous, gorgeous, intact piece of sagebrush landscape. In the burrow! Yeah. It's not usually this hard. With support from the National Science Foundation, mammalian ecologist Janet Racklow with the University of Idaho and a team want to understand this critical habitat from the perspective of a small but important long-term resident, the pygmy rabbit. Today, they're trapping and collaring. There we go, pit tag. Our hope is that our research can contribute to not just an understanding of rabbits, but also an understanding of how this system functions so that for the long term, we can have this system on the landscape in a healthy condition. The rabbits live in burrows under raised clumps of sage called Mima mounds. So they have kind of a tough life, they really do. They have a, a large number of predators, aerial predators, so birds, there are mammals, the badgers, weasels, coyotes, just about everything eats pygmy rabbits. So hiding, putting themselves in places where they're close to burrows, where they can quickly escape from predators, that's really important. Sheltering from the heat and cold is important too, but so is food. Sometimes they risk a venture into the open to eat. Lisa Shipley is a foraging ecologist with Washington State University. Especially in the winter, it might eat 99% of its diet in sagebrush. It's very nutritious, it has a lot of protein in it, but it also has a lot of toxic chemicals. It's the only mammal that can eat sagebrush for a, a virtually exclusively its diet. Using tracking data from the collars and imagery from unmanned aerial vehicles, the team generates maps that show where and when the rabbits spend their time, in burrows, under the sagebrush, and out in the open. Maps like these can tell them a lot about how the rabbits use and ultimately shape the landscape around them. They have to make choices all the time. So they can choose to forage in an area that has high quality forage, but it might be more risky. Or forage in an area that's out in the open, but then they're, they're in the, the sun and they overheat fairly rapidly. So all of the time, they're making trade-offs between places that are safe, places that are comfortable, places that are good to eat. Big picture, they hope their work with rabbits will help preserve this rich sagebrush ecosystem which covers large swaths of the western U.S. We know that certain species of sagebrush, certain ages of sagebrush, on certain types of landscapes have higher nutrition. That can be something that could be targeted in restoration projects that might use seed sources from sagebrush from different areas. So what we would like to do is to understand habitat quality so that we can work with land managers to help with, for example, restoration. There are very large fires that have occurred in several of the western states in sagebrush environments, and there's a lot of energy and time that's going into trying to restore the habitat so that it's suitable for wildlife as well as domestic livestock. And, and we need to know how should we restore this environment. That's nothing to quiver your nose over. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.